Hello everybody, Tall Paul here with Left Handed Knife Reviews. Today, we're going to be doing a little unboxing. Um, my phone recently uh, decided that it was going to die overnight one night. Would not take a charge, so I needed to send it in for service. So this is the first time I'm recording in a couple of weeks, and I'm very excited to be back at it. We have three or four reviews in the queue, and a bunch of stuff came during that time, but I wanted to do an unboxing video, so I've saved it all up. I think we have five knives, four knives, and a multi-tool in total to go through. So let's get right into it. Let's get our packages open. Tonight's opening knife is actually going to be the CJRB Centros. Been carrying this for review for a few days now and really been enjoying it. Actually, it's going to get passed off to Larry tonight uh, during a knife swap. Here, next box, and I believe this is our two packages. Yep. All right, a few boxes, some very identifiable logos. Let's start on the proper side of the board. We're gonna start over here on the left with the, what I believe is the non-knife. This is actually, I carry either um, a multi-tool or a Swiss Army knife, which is a multi-tool every single day. Um, it resides in my right pocket while my knife lives in the left um, and I've decided to branch out it has been pretty much the Leatherman Rev or the um, Swiss Army Super Tinker uh, for as long as I can remember and this is a little multi-tool from Gerber Got a little blade here not the sharpest thing in the world. We have my mandatory tool, the Phillips head screwdriver, supposedly, yep, with a little reversible bit. I think this was the arm bar was the name of it. Oh, we got, that is a pair of scissors, I think, maybe. Oh, yep, there we go. Scissors, it's a whole set of scissors. And then the other mandatory, oh, that's an awl. All right, you can carry this for a while. We might do a review on it, might not, don't know yet, but looking to change it up. Kind of been carrying the Super Tinker for a while because we're working on shorts now with it, deciding that it was gonna go from the the 50s directly into the 90s here in the Northeast. Um, and the Super Tinker is probably about the same weight as this, but looking to change it up. Leatherman's a little bit heavy for shorts, at least for what I do. So we'll see what it is. Next up we have our Civivi. This is going to be, what was the name of this one? It's been so long since I purchased these. This is the Imperium, the Civivi Imperium. Oh. Been doing a little bit of new Civivi stuff, combining that with a little bit of old Civivi stuff, um, just because this channel has not been around as long as Civivi has. So we've actually recently done uh, a review on the Backlash, which was one of Civivi's first options. And then I believe this is one of their, ooh, front flipper, their newer options. I really like front frippers. We have the CRG, CRJB, I think it's the Malaya. I'm probably slaughtering that name, that we're working on reviewing right now. And I liked the, um, the Civivi Exarch, but it lacked a certain amount of style. The, the thing was straight as a board. I mean, the ergonomics on it were just short of really rough, but this has a little bit of ergo to it. You know, you have a little spot for your finger. You have a little spot to choke up a little jimping along the back and it does kind of curve along here. That's nice. It's a good liner lock. 
It's not hard to manipulate at all. That's a good size blade too. This is cool. This is gonna be an exciting one. Natural G10 or the J G10. Not the biggest fan of it. Kind of feels like a Ghostbusters toy, like from the 90s where it would like glow in the dark. I know some people like it and some people have dyed it. I've never dyed it. Might be a video for another day, but I'm horrible at arts and crafts. So that will probably be more of a blooper video than anything else. This is the Steel Will Tight Box is what it's going to be named now. Steel Will Cut Jack, I think this one was. Okay. Feels like a plastic. Ah, oh, this is a nice little knife. Small amount of travel, let me move some of these boxes. Small amount of travel on this one for the liner lock, which is really nice when you have to manipulate it. A right-handed liner lock or a standard liner lock for a left-handed individual. I'm actually gonna take this knife out. There we go. Okay, so one way opening just with that flipper tab. You can get a little bit of a thumb ramp here. Good size finger choil, really kind of, wow. It fits right in the hand, like it just kind of glues itself in there. Not really built for the choking back on it. Especially for a bigger hand. Pinky just wants to slide right off, but in that choke up position, it just kind of falls right in there. It's nice. Not super abrasive on the sides. Both me and uh, Larry have worked in kitchens, so we often find ourselves holding our knives. Same as chef's knives, we don't necessarily choke all the way up. We don't choke back. We don't normally do a four finger grip. We find ourselves pinching either at the pivot or a little bit ahead of the pivot. But this, it's a nice little blade. Sharp out of the box, D2 steel, and reversible pocket clip. You'll see that as a common theme today. All right, next up, Artisan Cutlery. And this is the parent company of, I believe it's CJRB. I might be wrong there, I'm pretty sure. All right. And this is actually in the AR RPM 9. The same thing, I think it's the Malaya, the one I was talking about earlier, the front flipper is made out of. This is a cute little bag. It's got a little drawstring bag that it comes in. It's kind of classy. Ah, this is different. The up sweep is Unlike a lot of the knives that we've reviewed so far. All polished, polished hardware. It's got that same CRJB liner lock though. Their liner lock is perfectly smooth. Let's see if I can get this close enough to the camera. Right here. So that when you're trying to drag your finger across it, the coefficient of friction is incredibly low because it's a very smooth surface. So if you're not careful, your finger will ride up a bit and slide off, which is not something you necessarily want when you're trying to lock your knife. This is pretty cool though. Hmm. That one will be fun. Last but not least, this one is mainly for my dad. My dad loves his honey badger. Loves it, loves it, love it. And this is the, I believe, medium Warncliffe. He is the large drop point and he carries the thing all the time. He loves it. I am, this one I like better than the large drop point for sure. 
this one still got so the I don't know if we're calling this FRN or fancy plastic we'll call it fancy plastic for this because this feels like fancy plastic um, right along here again with this one not as bad as the large this is very rough so when you open the knife you're basically running your finger along this rough surface um, which is unfortunate yeah and it's hard to get out of the way that time i just ran my fingernail across it trying to get out of the way i mean it opens with a reverse flick and the thumb hole you can use to avoid it but as a flipper knife you kind of want to be able to use the flipper tab and as a left-handed individual flipper tab is going to give you the same experience as a left or right-handed individual and the opening hole favors the right side on these so much more that, you know, the reverse flick is really the only way to do it comfortably, regularly. But, oh, I got this in 8 CR13. Oops. Wanted to get that in D2. Not been in my, I should probably check the order, see if that was my mistake or uh, an Amazon mistake. But the texturing on this, the honeycomb, I mean, it's more for, I think, aesthetic than anything else. It adds a little bit of texture to it, but again, it feels, it feels like that Ghostbuster toy felt rather than looked, which is not necessarily a good thing, but I like the shape of this blade. And I like the fact that the choke up on this one is pretty nice and it's not super gigantic all right let's finish this up with i'm going to do a couple really quick size comparisons um here's your normal dixon ticonderoga pencil unsharpened we're going to just pick some staples here we will go with the civivi elementum and we will do this is a spider co paramilitary three lightweight here is your gerber armbar your civivi that's a good size knife steel wheel cut jack your artisan cutlery what i'm gonna call the fancy dagger and your honey badger medium sized look forward to reviewing all these knives first and foremost i'm just going to say right now really excited for this civivi i'm a big fan of a front flipper and also the artisan cutlery i'm excited to really kind of get in and do some work with this blade shape very different than ones that I've done so far. And probably the steel will. This one, just the ergos on this blade. And it's, we haven't done a steel wheel yet, so. It'll be a fun one to do. Well, thank you very much for joining me today on this little unboxing. Um, subscribe to the channel. We'll soon have reviews on all of these knives you see here, as well as a few more in the next couple of days, I believe we have um, this Vivi Backlash video coming out, the Manix 2 Lightweight from Spider Co. We're going to be comparing three different Spider Co's, one of them being um, the Paramilitary 3 Lightweight, uh, along with the Native 5 Lightweight and the uh, Manix 2 Lightweight, kind of just doing a comparison video on those. So be sure to subscribe for more great knife content. We'll see you next time.